Okay, hello everyone. We are at Wimbledon 2023 in luckily a day of sunshine today. Um, today I want to talk about how Wimbledon is using artificial intelligence and to do this I'm joined by Simon Boyden who is the technical lead here working with Wimbledon. You're from IBM. Maybe That's you right. can give us a very brief overview of what you do and what your job involves. Yeah, sure. So I work with the club year round on a part time basis. So roughly 50% of what I'm doing is preparing for the championships and all of the stuff that you see behind here. But also we help Wimbledon more broadly with everything from security to data strategy. So really just trying to work with them as a trusted advisor. Very good. So I'm really interested to learn about what's new when it comes to AI. Two big major things are happening that are quite exciting. Maybe you can take us through them. Yeah, of course. So there's, there's two real things that we've got for this year. So the first of these is AI commentary. So the real business problem here that we're trying to address is that Wimbledon has got 18 courts. They have commentary for some of the major show courts. Um, but of course, it's just not efficient, cost effective to try and provide commentary across all of those different courts. So the challenge we set ourselves was, could we actually create that commentary using AI? So we train some of our Watson X um, models so that we can actually take all of that statistical information that we know about a match, convert that into some really human sounding text, put it through text to speech and, and create that AI commentary. Um, and that's something you'll now see in all of the highlights videos that we're producing from all of the courts. Um, the second thing we're doing is looking at the draw analysis. Mm -hmm. So Wimbledon knows that it has a whole range of fans but that come and watch Wimbledon. And a lot of those aren't necessarily year-round tennis experts. Mm -hmm. So when they see a draw of 128 men or 128 ladies, they don't really quite know and understand what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. What we use is our underlying AI, which powers our Watson Power Index, which is kind of a, a way of understanding who's playing well and who's not playing well. We use that. We have the ability to understand when two players come together in a head-to-head, -head, who's more likely to win. And what we've now done is to extrapolate that out across the draw. So you can see really easily in a visual way, has someone got a more favorable draw? Have they got a more challenging draw? Um, perhaps who would we predict they might be most likely to meet in the quarterfinals, for example? Very good. I love the AI, the ability of AI, obviously, to predict this build on the power index that was introduced mm. last year. That's right. The generative AI bit. Maybe yes. you can take us through how you train the model. I guess it was based on on what's an X Correct. and and how did you train the AI to know how to comment on tennis? Yeah, it's a really good question. So um, within what's an X, we have some of our um, generative models, some of our foundation models. So there's a particular one that's got the name of Sandstone that we use. It's been trained on a, a very broad set of data. Mm -hmm. What we needed to do, though, was to take that very broad capability and make it really specific for tennis. So there's two broad things we did. So first of all, was we also we added to it, to that kind of core training set, a lot of tennis-specific data. Um, so we have obviously huge archives of stuff. Um, also some tennis data from some of our third parties. So first of all, we just we increased the size of that data set that we used to train the model. And then the second thing we did was to really tune it on the very specific tasks that we had. Mm. And really what that involved was um, some people creating some really good commentary information based on some data. Mm. So we were able to show the model, you know, this is what a really good set summary looks like. This is what you should be saying when maybe someone's broken a point. Here's what's really good for an introduction. Um, so that allowed the, the model to actually understand what good and bad look like. Mm -hmm. And then the final step of that, of course, is always the tuning. So let's see what the model's producing. Actually, it always produces a number of different options. Let's kind of go, actually, of those five options, that, that was a really good one. Mm -hmm. And it's that kind of iterative process that lets us kind of build that um, that real capability. Very good. And, and again, last year, you created the oh, a while ago the, the automated match summary, the video yes, analysis. Right, yes. So you're using this AI generated commentary on those at the moment. That's correct. But I, I had a tour earlier and I saw proof of concept for the AI generated content that you could potentially use for all of this. This is in the pipeline, I guess. It is. So I think what we're what we're doing this year, and it's a very common thing with Wimbledon, is we, we tend to sort of try and build the foundation. So we, we now have that capability to build that commentary on top of some of the match highlights. Um, we can see a whole range of different um, possibilities for this, right? Mm -hmm. um, it Wouldn't it be great to be able to do multilingual commentary for, for people in different countries? Um, wouldn't it be great to be able to personalize it? You know, mm -hmm. you, you want a particularly chatty, kind of excited mm -hmm. commentary style. I perhaps want a more traditional Wimbledon one. We can tailor all of that piece. Um, and I think the stuff you've referred to there as well is what we're trying to do is actually do some additional AI on the video itself to actually understand more about what is happening in the match. Um, at the moment, we're using it to look at the actual tennis, but that could be extended it to look at I don't know, 
is Nadal doing slightly different kind of pre pre point routine? Does that say something about what's going on? Mm. So that we can really start to build more colour into that commentary. Um, you know, very much like a, a human would try and do about you know narrating the point. Yeah, I really like this. So at the moment, it's text based, but also voice based. Correct. So we we use it for we basically have two outputs. The first is is absolutely is the voice. So we take the information we put, we put it through an automated process, which is effectively a text-to-speech model. Um, so we have a, a sort of a lady's voice and a men's voice. Um, the other thing that we do then is add the closed captioning onto the, the video. So useful for, for a variety of different use cases. Mm. Fascinating. So I, I'd love to know a bit more for anyone who is watching us mm. who or listening to us and might not know how AI has been introduced over the years. What have been some of the major milestones from maybe Hawkeye, machine vision to some of the security use cases? I don't know. What... Yeah, I mean, AI is now is, is used in so many different places around what we do. So as you kind of talked about, um, the AI highlights video we introduced kind of three or four years ago, this yeah. idea of teaching, of teaching the AI model. What was exciting about tennis based on crowd noise, based on player reactions, um, you know, a really great example of um, being able to scale. So, so Wimbledon was never going to be able to create highlights packages for every court and every match mm. using people. It takes hours at a time. Mm. Suddenly you can do it using an AI process. I think last year we produced about a thousand AI highlights. You can imagine how long that oh, would yeah. take to do by hand. Um, we use it completely in a completely different sense in our security world. So we see lots of people trying to, if you like, kind of rattle the door on Wimbledon, sort of see if any doors are unlocked. Um, that generates a huge number of incidents. Mm. Within some of our Q radar products, we use AI to be able to say, well, actually, of all of those things that are happening, which are the ones that are really interesting? What's the thing that a, that a, a human should really go and investigate in a little bit more detail? Mm. Um, all the way through, we've used AI to create a official Wimbledon poster. So we got uh, a whole thousands and thousands and thousands of photos from the Wimbledon archive. We taught the AI model to understand what was in those photos. We created one of those kind of mosaic kind of collage photos um, using, you know, pictures of uh, umbrellas to make up the umbrella, pictures of centre court to make up centre court. So it's really a, a fun, really fun use of AI as well. Very good. For Wimbledon itself, I guess any organization introducing AI needs to run, needs to want some benefits. And I guess with things like the AI commentary and the and automating the video highlights, the automation element obviously, delivering efficiencies, potentially personalization. Can you quantify some of the impact and benefits around the use of AI here at Wimbledon? Absolutely. So you, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I mean, Wimbledon is a relatively small organization and they always want to do the very, very best output, really, really high quality output. And that's always limited them in terms of the scale that they can operate at. So the great example of you know, AI highlights, you know, maybe on, using people, you could generate two or three highlights packages a day. Um, as I said, last year we literally generated a thousand of them. So much the greater scale. But also what's really interesting as well is you can produce them within minutes of doing a match. So for example, if you're a social media editor, you can get a couple of those highlight shots, you know, a couple of minutes after the last ball's been struck, get them straight out on social media, kind of capture the buzz and attention, not two hours later once someone's edited them. So I think both the scale, the speed has been super important for women. And what have been some of the learning points? What has been difficult in terms of implementing AI here at Wimbledon and maybe some transferable tips for anyone who's thinking about using AI in their own organization? Yeah, no, so I, so I also work a lot with banking organizations and I see a lot of parallels between what we do at Wimbledon and, and, and to be honest, it's probably the same challenges that you get on most AI programs. The first of those is all really around the data. So you need to make sure you've got the data that you want, so you've got to make sure it's of high quality, You've got to make sure that you've, you've removed any kind of noise out of that data yeah. and you've brought it all into one place. Um, the second thing really then is around the training. Um, you need to be able to define what good looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and often that does involve people, right? Sometimes you need a, people to create a small training set, mm -hmm. um, teach the model what good looks like, what bad looks like. Um, and then I think the, the third piece then really is all really around bias. So everything we do with Wimbledon and every time we use AI, we really focused on making sure that, that what we're doing you know, is, is free from bias as far as possible, 
um, making sure that it's it's fair, that it's explainable, so that you know what the what the AI model is doing is something that you know, makes sense to you or an I, um, and, and and you have the governance around that as well. Yeah, so governance is another important topic, especially the responsible and ethical use of this sort of technology, especially when it comes to AI. Mm -hmm. How do we? How do you make sure that this happens here? I guess Wimbledon is is keen to make make sure this is all used properly. Of course. Yeah. We're, so the very very important thing that we start around is really around the policies. So yeah. you know IBM has a really really strong ethical policy around the use of AI, and that's obviously shared by the club. And that is really all around, you know, freedom from bias, traceability, mm -hmm. understanding the, the the lineage of the model. So that we really understand, you know, what data's gone into it. We understand and we mitigate against any biases, and also we kind of continue that in a in an iterative loop, right? So that we understand what's going on. Once we have those policies in place, we're actually able to implement that. So you mentioned Watson X. Watson X has a lot of really useful tools, particularly in the Watson X governance component, which helps us understand those biases. It helps us mo monitor the models and understand what's coming out. Um, so those those things together are really super important in terms of, um, you know, both being clear about what we're trying to achieve and then actually making sure we're adhering to the policies we've set up. Very good. And what's next? Where where do you think this will go? Obviously, we've seen the proof of concept being implemented. Mm. This is, I guess, something on the horizon. It, it is. What, what else? What is a generative AI that's particularly interesting maybe for next year, or is there anything else on the horizon? So, so I think, I think for me, I think, you know, we have we have these really interesting innovation sessions that we run with with the club, um, and and I think we've only really just touched the surface of what we can do around AI commentary, and we very much think about this as kind of a foundation year of building some learnings. We've talked a little bit about things like personalization. We've talked about um, things like being able to kind of do multilingual. What we would love to be able to do is what we talk about is kind of color commentary. So so I guess where our comment commentary at is at the moment is quite factual. Yeah. Um, but you know what it's like if you've got two talking heads talking about a tennis yeah. match. It's all about, you know, how the players are looking, mm -hmm. how they're feeling, how mm -hmm. they're performing. What the We'd love to be able to add some, some of those elements into the into the commentary as well. And then finally, you mentioned our use of AI vision, you know, understanding not just what's happening in the tennis match, um, but wouldn't it be great that the commentary could the the AI could automatically tell who's in the royal box and kind of you know comment on the yeah. fact that Roger Federer has just been clapping Andy Murray on centre court in an automated way and you know that is that is definitely within the the realms of possibility just need to need to get going on it <laughs> super exciting as you probably all agree this is super interesting how AI is actually being implemented here at Wimbledon thank you so much Simon for your You're time welcome. today for anyone who ever wants to re-watch or re-listen to this simply watch, uh, head to my youtube channel or my podcast um, where you can find this one and many other similar and exciting conversations thank thanks you. Bernard. thank you